everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Male Perspective. I am your host, Lana Reed, and today I have with me Dr. Ed Adams. He is the co-author of the book, Reinventing, Reinventing Masculinity, The Liberating Power of Pow Power of Compassion and Connection. I'm gonna get that out, a little tongue-tied today. But mm -hmm. first and foremost, Dr. Ed, thank you for making time to hang out with me today, and welcome to the show. Well, it's a privilege to be here. Thank you very much. So as I said in the uh, opening there as my tongue twister title there for some reason, Reinventing Masculinity, the Liberating Power of Compassion and Connection. Um, am I to assume that you poor lads didn't feel that you had the ability to be compassionate and have connection uh, before? Is that something men didn't have the luxury of? Uh, no, Lana, that, that would be just the opposite. Um, men are extraordinarily compassionate and capable of extraordinary compassion and deep connection. What men have done in general is disconnect themselves from compassion as a masculine trait. They uh, saw it as a, or uh, grow up, we grow up thinking that it's soft or that it is feminine, or that it's important, uh, but it's not as important as those other aspects of masculinity, uh, strength and dominance and, and um, uh, stoicism, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, so uh, I think reclaiming compassion is, and, and deep connection, broader connection is, is vital now in the 21st century. Okay. Now, um, reading your book, there seems to be two different concepts or two different principles um, that lead into or tie into what you just were mentioned. Um, you have this concept of confined masculinity and liberating masculinity. So if you could, could you explain the difference between those two for us? Yes. Uh, confined masculinity uh, aligns very well with many of the traditional contemporary ideas of what it means to be a man. And these include things that typically don't work well, but they include things like don't expose your feelings, don't be vulnerable, um, do not um, uh, show weakness. Uh, your uh, idea is to conquer or to uh, make money, have high status, um, uh, deal with women in a uh, more conquering way uh, or objectify women. Um, and uh, these, this, we know from the literature that strict adherence to these and other confined ideas of what it means to be a man hurts a man. Uh, mm -hmm. Men who believe that uh, um, strongly find themselves um, sicker than other men, they die sooner than other men, and most importantly, they're unhappier than other men. Okay. Whereas a liberating masculinity is a masculinity that in a nutshell is more fully human. Okay. Um, that is able to express oneself, to uh, engage in life, to... Um, express your creativity, to express your intimacy, uh, to be able to um, be show tenderness, uh, certainly compassion and connection, not only to yourself and to your immediate world, but um, to the extended world and to the natural world. So it, it, it's a paradigm shift for okay. men. Okay. Now, um, is it possible, so confined masculinity, I'm assuming is tying into the mindset, and I think you mentioned it, you know, like being the financial provider or, or getting finances, getting money or whatever. So I, I, I'm assuming that it's the being the protector and the provider, whereas liberating masculinity is um, on the different, I, I guess I wanna ask, is it possible for a man to kind of straddle the fence and have both qual or both of these? They're not contradictory. We need to be providers and we need to be protectors. Okay. But as I say in the book, <clears throat> an example of a man um, 
that uh, I was treating in therapy, uh, he said, yeah, I'm a protector. I, I, I have a 357 Magnum in my uh, drawer upstairs in the bedroom and, and uh, somebody better not break into this house. Mm-hmm. Um, or um, a provider would be, uh, I've given my kids and my wife more than I ever had. Mm-hmm. And so those are the traditional ideas. And there's nothing, there's, certainly we need to provide and protect in that traditional kind of way. But when you're talking to your child and he or she is feeling um, brokenhearted and having a tender talk with him or her is mm-hmm. also protecting. It's also providing. Uh, if, if, you know, a two-year-old falls down and 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 scuffs his knee, our natural reaction is to go over and help. And, and it's going to be okay, puts put some, some ointment on it and a band aid and so on and comfort. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so that is a form of protecting and providing. So what we're talking about is not instead of but in addition to gotcha. Okay, understood. Now I'm wondering, um, cause many of the, the, the scenarios with men is, uh, my grandfather had confined masculinity. My father had confined masculinity. So now here I am. Um, maybe I have a, a little boy that I just, um, brought into this world. How do I begin the work of shifting this mentality, this mindset? Mm-hmm. That shift begins when uh, men begin to recognize that they have a gender Mm -hmm. and that gender roles matter. They matter how we interact with ourselves and how we interact with others and interact with the world. Um, Men take, uh, often take gender for granted. Um, And so the awareness comes first and then uh, we talk about in the book, the five C's and as a path towards a more liberating masculinity. Okay. And uh, I could go over those five C's. Um, the first one is curiosity. And that has to do with um, asking questions that uh, challenge. Uh, is the way I am being a man working well? Uh, are people happier Uh, the way I act around me? Is there Mm -hmm. a better way to uh, connect and to relate? Is there a better way to, uh, for people to feel safe around me? Mm -hmm. Uh, So uh, the the curiosity, the question asking uh, is a vital first step um, beyond the awareness that gender matters. Uh, The uh, second C of the five C's um, uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, a I, the idea of of um, compassion itself? Mm-hmm. Compassion is. Let me define compassion. Compassion is the ability to see suffering and pain in others. And here's the important part: is to do something to uh, help it uh, to relieve it or to help it go away. Mm-hmm. So it's a call to action, but it's a recognition of the suffering and that takes courage it it takes it takes uh, which is uh, another c is the courage the courage to confront suffering in the world and within oneself that will evoke not only compassion towards others but if a man recognizes that he's hurting that he's unhappy in a relationship or he's not getting uh, what he wants out of that relationship or out of his work or his his career, um, that um, it takes courage, first of all, to, to admit to the suffering, and then it takes um, uh, self-compassion to do something to relieve that. Um, and then connection is the fourth C. The, the fourth C is uh, not only a connection to our immediate family and uh, to our friends and to our sort of uh, nuclear unit, uh, but it is a uh, in a world today we have to connect to a broader range of of, of people. From uh, uh, we have to be accepting and embracing of our differences. We have to 
uh, see that someone else suffering uh, in a different part of the world or a different part of the country, um, as the saying goes, but for the grace of God, go I, mm -hmm. that we are indeed um, connected uh, in that way. And that uh, if I ignore that suffering in others in that connected way, um, uh, I'm, not, I'm not adding to the benefits of the world. Um, and so it, it is both an intention to pay attention to the suffering and to help relieve it or to the pain or discomfort. I don't, I don't want suffering to be confused with uh, like, like you, you broke your leg or something mm -hmm. like that. It's, a, it's disappointment and it's hurt and it's, um, it's regret and so on and so forth, um, which leads us to the fifth C, which is commitment. And, and once you're aware that you have a gender and um, you have asked questions and challenged yourself, you have the uh, courage to confront it, the compassion to help relieve it, and you have a sense of broader connection, then commitment is a commitment to change as a man, to do something uh, actionable that, um, uh, that moves a man beyond where he was to where he wants to go, mm -hmm. to become more loving, to become more tender, to become uh, stronger, or sometimes to, um, to become firmer, to mm -hmm. become more assertive, <clears throat> to become more, uh, to set uh, boundaries, uh, particularly for men who are uh, being targeted or bullied okay. in some way. Um, so uh, that, those five C's, uh, that we uh, point out in a book, uh, actually offer a kind of uh, a, a, a recipe for men to follow that they all interreact and they all renew themselves continuously through life. Okay. Now, going over the five C's, um, <clears throat> taking the last one, the commitment to change where, you know, the guy has the uh, aha moment and I need to probably... Uh, input these new techniques and tactics to, to bring about change seems to first start with this curiosity. Now, as I'm, I'm reflecting on some interpersonal relationships I've had, coworkers, you know, uh, people in stores and stuff like that, or, or even some family members, some men um, don't really feel that their confined masculinity is a problem. There's, there's nothing wrong. I mean, this is, it's wonderful. Um, even though it might be uh, not be productive in their life, not being fruitful, producing good rewards, but they still don't want to let it go. Uh, is there something that the, the inner circle that's around these types of men can do to kind of tap them on the shoulder and say, there's a better way? Mm -hmm. That's a, a excellent question, and it's a question of change. Um, when um, uh, that that gets to the courage part of being able to talk to other men about what's going on inside them or what they observe is going on, mm -hmm. men can observe depression in other men and say nothing, uh, but a good friend or somebody who uh, 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 cares about that person is uh, uh, it takes courage to say there's something going on inside of you we need to, we really need to uh, talk about it and I'm here for you if you want to mm -hmm. talk about it or to, to self-disclose to be vulnerable himself um, and there that's one way that uh, men around other men can help each other um, 30 years ago, I founded an organization called Men Mentoring Men, and uh, it, it is an organization to help men uh, grow not only, um, uh, I, I like to think of it as growing deeper, uh, growing roots, growing down, um, and by creating a safe environment, safe typically means a shameless environment where uh, for men mentoring men has operated with one rule and that is no man shames another man. Okay. And what men begin to do is to see that they have so much in common, that they have so much, um, that their life experience is not unique, that they do fit in, they do belong, that they have 
uh, positive qualities. I often say to the men uh, who are being told uh, uh, that, in, in essence, that they're a good man and they're pushing back on that, is to um, is to hear the vision. You know, to that other men aren't aren't uh, uh, giving them a bunch of bull mm. that they're seeing in that man that their quality of of their givingness or their tenderness or their lovingness or their willingness to self-sacrifice. Um, you know, we're, we're not just talking about soft things here. Okay. We're talking about the ability to really uh, be involved in life. And that takes a, um, a lot of guts and it takes a lot of courage. Okay. Now, um, your group that you uh, mentioned, uh, Men Mentoring Men, um, it, where it provides a, a safe space for men to, you know, become their best selves. And we've always throughout the generations thought that men had these social groups that allowed them to, you know, be men, you know, you're thinking uh, sports teams, uh, your social clubs or whatever, but listening to you talk, those types of groups might actually be toxic environments that are just kind of creating this confined, reinforcing this confined masculinity. So there's, there's groups out there that are not really healthy for men to be involved in. Should I be? Well, I, I, that's certainly possible that there are unhealthy groups. Um, but uh, I think in a sense, they're more limited. So that if, if a man in a locker room, um, uh, say sprained his ankle, Mm -hmm. um, and he's in a locker room and he, he's hurting. And another man says to him, um, uh, Oh, come on, grow up. It's part of the game. Mm. Um, it's like, you're not allowed to hurt. You're not allowed, you know, it's not like he has to be coddled, but at the same token, uh, if another man says to him a, a little empathy, it's like, you know what, if you put that on ice or, if you go see the trainer or uh, it's going to feel a lot better and I'd stay off of it for a few days. And if you need some help, I'm, I'll be around to help you. Um, so uh, that's a different interchange, a different interaction. So when men limit themselves to either um, uh, sort of a uh, subtle or direct put downs for feeling or for hurting or for even being happy, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, it, it's an effort to, uh, in a confined masculinity, that's staying in a narrow band of emotional experience. Okay, okay. Now, as a, a let's say a parent uh, uh, tasked with this daunting task of raising a, a young boy into a man, uh, because it, you're, you straddle the fence like you don't want to coddle, but you do want to have a create a person who has a sense of strength, personal strength. Uh, are, are, are there some parenting things that we can do early on to make sure that this is a well adjusted, liberated, masculine individual? Yes, it's like um, how many men have heard. Um, uh, if you don't stop crying, I'm going to give you something to cry about. Mm, um, mm -hmm. Or um, um, come on, get up, well, walk it off. And, and uh, you know, I, I attended soccer games uh, watching my son play, and some of the men uh, just uh, uh, just yelling uh, mm -hmm. uh, as if they're supposed to be, um, you know, uh, uh, 29 year old professional soccer players. Um, and uh, so I think that that ability to recognize emotion, uh, respond to the emotion, yet encourage participation and encourage, uh, uh, don't let this get you down, uh, is a one of those calls fathers have to make. And it's mm -hmm. a judgment call. And if you're going to err, I would err on the side of empathy rather than the side of stoicism. Okay, okay. Now, also listening to everything that you're talking about, uh, this is a lot of men doing inner work on themselves. But let's be honest, uh, Dr. Ed, there are a lot of women walking around 
in this world who have their own perceptions of what a man should be, right? Um, so w women might not be very helpful in the equation of getting a man to his best place because they might be saying, oh, you're such a punk, you're such a wimp. Why don't you just man up? Why don't you, you know, the, um, how, do, what do, as women, what do we need to do to start adjusting our mindset as well. I mean, you've got a guy who's doing his work, but he might come home or might go to work or, you know, might be sharing space with a woman who's not very sympathetic to the work that he's trying to do. Right. Well, I, I see that sometimes in therapy where a man will enter therapy and say, my wife wants me to be in therapy so I could learn to express my feelings more. And then uh, maybe a session or two later, um, he is telling me how uh, she wants to have a new home or she wants to, mm. to do this or to do that, which means he has to work harder. Um, and so he's in this quandary is like, am I supposed to be available to you or am I supposed to provide financially for you? Because one can contradict the other. Um, and... Um, uh, so women have to get on board. Women mm -hmm. have to start looking at men as human beings with a full range of emotion and um, have an expectation that uh, if they want a man more available, they have to produce, it has to be sexy to a woman. It has mm -hmm. to be, it has to, it has to turn them on to have a man who is multifaceted. Mm -hmm. that he's allowing himself to express his fuller humanity um, and uh, to take responsibility for not wanting her cake and eating it too sometimes. Gotcha. Uh, it's a two-way street because gotcha. women can reinforce um, and often do reinforce confined masculinity more than liberating masculinity. Gotcha. Good points. Okay. Um, now I want to, I want to switch directions a little bit and, uh, I'm so, I have such short period of time, but I want to switch directions a little bit. I was on your sure. website and, um, I saw a blog, uh, that you wrote titled, uh, from proud boys to mature men. And, uh, first and foremost, I want to say thank you for the article, uh, as a black person. Um, it's, it's, it's refreshing. Uh, but it talks uh, about how some of the confined masculinity traits in white males have manifested themselves in what we saw in what uh, Rittenhouse, the youngster that went to um, shoot the protesters. Now, my question as two human beings on this planet, one right. who happens to be black, one who happens to be white, um, and one who does a lot of work with masculinity, uh, it, it always seems that uh, there's an irony in play that white males get the privilege to protect theirs, but black males do not. Okay. Uh, you've been doing this work for some time. And I want to ask you, honestly, do you see some sort of avenue or direction where lasting change can come about uh, where white males and black males are on equal playing fields? Um, well, I hope that day comes. <laughs> uh, um, I, think, um, I think that, um, again, we have to be mindful or conscious of the problem. We have, we have to admit that there is a problem, that there <laughs> is a, a uh, that we're not in competition for happiness in life, we're 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 cooperating with each other. That's where that that's that 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 we're sort of rowing the same boat. You know, it doesn't matter what color we are, or what age we are, or what what sex we are, or what sexual orientation we are. Uh, we all have limited time on this planet, and the more we participate with each other and connect with each other, the better off we are. And Right now, there is far too much uh, division. Yes. Um, uh, between uh, uh, with men, like uh, 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 black men interacting with white men, and white men interacting with Asian men, and mm -hmm. and with black men, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in men mentoring men, for example, 
Um, we learn a, a, a lot from men of different uh, religious backgrounds, uh, different colors, different uh, um, countries coming from, uh, uh, different sexual orientations. But what happens, and, and this is what can happen in the world, is that when you become related to one another and you start to see each other's commonality, the differences, uh, the differences, they don't necessarily disappear, but they, they, lose, they lose the charge mm -hmm. that they, they may have if you're afraid of someone else. Um, because you begin to realize I'm, I'm, I, I have nothing to be afraid of and, I'm, and I feel safe and now let's talk mano a mano or let's, mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's connect about life itself. Okay. And there is no, the experiences aren't, every, everybody wants to live a full, happy life. I mean, if, if I walk outside and I'm, I see an ant walking on, on, on the sidewalk, sometimes I'll say to myself, all that ant wants to do is live a full, happy life. So why would I want to step on it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> true. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Uh, you know, and, and that is what uh, many of us have been screaming for for decades, centuries. You know, we just we just want the same opportunity to live a full life. Now, it seems like what I'm hearing is that if we could just get all the the people, all the men of various colors and religions into a men mentoring men workshop, all will be well, Dr. Ed, right? <laughs> it would be better. <laughs> <laughs> so are the uh, men mentoring men, is it an online experience or do, is it offline? How does that work? Well, it's, it's uh, offline right now during COVID. Okay. Um, and uh, the, uh, the men mentoring men.org, it's a nonprofit organization, um, is the website that men would go to, to, um, learn about men mentoring men and what we're about and so on. Um, and uh, so I would recommend that they pursue that. Um, also, uh, since we are geographically limited, uh, I often suggest for men to have, again, the courage, even if it's with one or two other men, to begin their own little group, no matter where they are to sit down with each other and say, let's figure out a way to talk about things that matter. And I suggest always that operate with the rule that no one shames another man. Okay. Because that'll shut the whole show down. Okay. Okay. No one shames. That's, I think that is, um, that's a struggle because I, I just noticed in some of my like friendship relationships you know it just seems natural for when it gets uncomfortable between guys that's the default mechanism you know oh man you know that ain't nothing you, you so it, that right. might take some work some navigation but you know i do notice that that is a default for guys really to, right. to diminish yeah so yeah well we're not going to change this thing uh, fast but we're going to do it progressively and with awareness and with, I, I say in Men Mentoring Men, let's change the world one man at a time. One man at a time. That's great. I love it. So Dr. Ed, uh, 30 minutes goes by so fast. I don't, I don't know how this happens, but we're at the end <laughs> of the 30 minutes here. I could talk to you for a little bit longer. So we're going to do the random question. And then I want you to tell the audience how they pick up the book reinventing masculinity, liberating power of compassion and connection, and then also um, how they connect with men mentoring men. But the random question, totally random. Let's see what we get here, Dr. Ed. Okay. Okay, you don't have to tell me the name, but just if you do, yes or no. Do you still remember the name of the first person you had a crush on? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Those puppy love days, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, Dr. Ed, please tell everybody how they pick up the book and how they get in touch with you and how they join one of your uh, men mentoring men groups. How we, you know, as, we as ladies, we might want to direct our guys there. So, you know, I think this might work for you. So how do we get all of that? Well, uh, let's start with the book. The book is available in local bookstores and and. Barnes and Noble, but it's certainly uh, available on Amazon. 
Uh, again, the title is um, Reinventing Masculinity, the Liberating Power of Compassion and Connection. Uh, it's with my co-author, Ed Fraunheim. Um, and uh, the book is been, was released just a couple of weeks ago, uh, but it uh, already achieved a number one status in, in uh, uh, men gender studies. Um, and uh, Men Mentoring Men is uh, simply menmentoringmen.org, uh, a nonprofit organization. Um, and uh, my personal website is dredadams.net. That's D R E D A D A M S.net. It's one of my patients pointed out. It's Dread Adams. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. That's cute. Well, Dr. Ed Adams, there's no dread there to be found at all. Um, I appreciate your time today. I really do. I learned a lot here and I'm going to do my part to help men get into a healthier mental place because, you know, I think that just parlays into so many other areas of life as well. Absolutely. So, thank I you. really appreciate your work and your efforts. It's they're 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 not optional, they're necessary. Thank you, thank you very much, I appreciate yeah, it. You're welcome. So that is all for this week's episode of The Male Perspective. I am your host, Lana Reed, and I will see everybody next time. Oh.